Hi, this is Dan Whitney with the Whitney Law Firm in Towson, Maryland. Today, we're going to talk about um, bedbug settlements. And recently, um, we settled a bedbug claim involving a hotel for $175,000. And so a question when there's a large settlement uh, is very often, why does a hotel or an apartment complex pay so much money to settle a case involving bed bug bites? It's a good question, and there's an answer to it. Now, generally speaking, what happens when litigation begins involving a bed bug, bed bug claim, whether it's against a hotel, a vacation rental, uh, an apartment complex, or some other place where people stay, spend the night, are bitten, um, and then realize that they've been bitten and, of course, then want to bring claims? When somebody gets bitten, all they know is something bad has happened. They have no way of discovering all the different actions, lack of action, uh, negligence, or intentional acts or intentional failures to act that led up to the point in time of them getting bit. So what happens when a uh, bed bug lawsuit is filed is that what we end up doing is we end up going back in time and we gather all the information we can. And it's very often with um, many, many, many records. Um, years and years worth of complaint records involving an apartment or a hotel or a vacation rental. Um, and we take depositions of the people who are involved or we think might be involved in the case, which might be an apartment complex manager, a hotel manager, pest control companies that are involved, uh, prior tenants in an apartment or prior guests in a hotel room. By taking the time and the expense to do all of that, what happens is very often we can paint a picture. And it is very often an unflattering picture of how uh, a property management company handled past complaints uh, of their guests or tenants involving bed bugs. Now, by engaging in litigation, what you're essentially saying is whatever usually very low dollar amount is being offered right out of the gate, uh, it's not enough. And we believe that based on what happened, there were significant failures that caused that, and we're going to find out what happened. And by finding out what happened and bringing those facts to light, most likely the um, property management company or the owner is going to be willing to pay to keep that uh, information uh, to itself and not publicized because they want to buy their piece because very often what we find um, is atrocious for considering how uh, they responded or failed to respond to uh, guests and uh, or tenant complaints. So some examples of this, um, we've had cases involving apartment complexes where somebody moves into a new apartment and right away they start getting bit. And what very often happens is the tenant complains to the property manager and it's almost like a stock response. Maybe they teach this in property management school. Whenever anybody complains of bed bugs, just deny it and say it's never happened before and this was the first time and then, of course, for extra credit, blame the person who makes the complaint. I think that's like 101 in property management because that's very often what we hear. Uh, but of course, you know, if for every time a tenant gets blamed for causing an infestation, I'd say nine and a half out of 10, if not 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, the, the management company is lying. And what we end up finding out through through uh, pest control records or getting the names of the past guests and con or, um, tenants and contacting them, we discover that there's usually a bad infestation in that apartment or in the adjacent units uh, that was reported and often ignored or not treated correctly. And in cases in the past involving hotels, there's very much the same syndrome of when we go back in time and we speak, we speak with past guests in that room, uh, we very often find that they had reported a problem uh, and it was either ignored or half measures were taken in a poor attempt to resolve it. And what that leads to is it, it is then no surprise when a guest in the future, after it's first reported and not properly treated, then a guest or a tenant in the future comes along and sure enough, they spend one or two nights or they just move in and all of a sudden they're badly bitten. There's bed bugs everywhere and it turns into a nightmare. You know, uh, somebody getting 
terribly bitten in one night uh, or an apartment being infested upon moving, it, it doesn't happen magically. It happens for a reason. And that reason is often it was negligently handled uh, when it was reported to the management company involved. So that's a little bit of background on when a case is filed involving um, bed bug litigation, you know, what the benefits are of going back in time, engaging in litigation, not just taking the first number that's offered, but actually doing your homework, figuring out what all happened, and then using those facts uh, to leverage the best settlement possible, um, all things considered. And there's a lot of things to consider. So I hope that's been helpful. We have more uh, videos on the specifics of other settlements, other settlements that were not confidential, and other videos involving specifically apartments and also specifically hotels. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave uh, something in the leave a question in the comments. Uh, please subscribe. And um, thank you so much for watching. Take care.